And then he calls God and Almighty himself onto the witness stand, just like my picture showed. And the Father himself, who sent me, has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. So God the Father is talking, and he's, he, he's out of time and space, and he's declaring that Jesus is the Son of God, but they unfortunately cannot hear it. They cannot see it themselves. It would be similar to having radio stations blaring from, uh, from antennas, but you and I can't hear it at all unless we happen to have a radio, and if the radio is tuned to the right station, then we can hear it. Uh, from a TV's perspective, then we can see it. But without that rece receptor, and without it being tuned correctly, we're not going to be able to. In the same way, we cannot see God. We cannot hear his voice in that manner, not audibly. There was one time in Jesus' ministry, actually twice, where God the Father spoke. People thought it was thundering. Other people actually heard it and were very afraid. It also happened that when, at Mount Sinai when Moses was on the mountain and God spoke to all the people of Israel and the people answered and said, oh, don't let God talk to us. That was pretty scary. Moses, you be the one to talk to us and uh, we'll listen to you as if it was God. So I find this pretty interesting because Jesus goes back to Moses and he talks about how he is like him. And I really believe this defines Jesus' ministry, at least as we see it in the book of John. Now let's look at the further. God has spoken through his scriptures. Jesus says, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. It's fascinating to me how Jesus views the scriptures. Even though we cannot hear God in real time, because he has spoken through his prophets, we are now accountable as if God has spoken directly to us. And so that says two things to me. Actually, it, it should say a lot more. But a couple of things that come to mind is, first of all, God's will can be known. Second of all, it tells me that I am responsible to know it. I need to be reading the Word. I need to be studying it. I need to be asking His Holy Spirit to enlighten me so that I am able to not only internalize it, but also proclaim it. And I believe all of us are responsible in that way. Jesus says, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. So Jesus talks about all of the scriptures at this point testifying of Jesus Christ. And I'm sure that we know some of the key passages we know about Isaiah 53, where we hear about the suffering servant who took on the sin of the world, or the sin of his people, in order that they did not have to die. Jesus is, in fact, the Lamb of God. We also see passages where uh, uh, Isaiah, in other places, talks about the rod of Jesse. Uh, we talk about the, the lineage of David. All these things point to Jesus Christ. But there's one passage in particular that I believe truly defines who Jesus believed himself to be. And this passage is found in Deuteronomy chapter 18. He says, But you are not willing to come to me in order that you might have life. I do not receive honor from men, but I know you, that you did not, do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. So Jesus' point is, the scriptures testify of me, the miracles testify of me, even your witness, John the Baptist, testifies of me, and yet you're not going to accept the verdict. And therefore, things are turning around. We're going to start turning this whole thing around so that I'm not on the stand being judged, but you are. Jesus says, you're not willing to come to me in order that you might have life. And that's a real problem, if people are unwilling to do that. And I'm not, I think there are lots of reasons why people don't come to Christ. In this particular case, Jesus is talking about honor talking about receiving honor from other people. He, um, 
and also not having the love of God. They're not willing to humble themselves before God. Pride gets in the way. Jesus says, how can you believe? You who receive honor from one another, but do not seek the honor that comes from the only God. Now remember, true honor from God comes with humility and repentance. Those are the people that God honors. David put it this way, a contrite heart, God will not turn away. But Jesus was telling people throughout his ministry, it's your lack of faith, it's your unwillingness to repent, those are the things that keep you from having a right relationship with God. And God's word, in fact, starts judging us because of that. He says, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? So, Jesus is putting it out there. You've already got the witness of the scriptures, and he has one scripture in mind, that if they're not going to believe it, then they're not going to believe Jesus either. Pride gets in the way, and it blinds us. Here's the passage that I'm referring to. And I, didn't, I didn't put it all out there. I just have verses 18 and 19, and I think it says enough. This is God talking to Moses. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among the brethren and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. So this is a key passage for Jesus because he says throughout the entire book of John and in other scriptures the, we are not going to be judged for our sins. We are going to be judged on whether we receive Jesus Christ or not. And that's what this is talking about. A prophet like Moses. And think about it. Moses was somebody who delivered his people. He went to the, to the Pharaoh and he said, let God's people go, right? Jesus, in the same way, liberates us from the power of sin. Now, people were looking for a Messiah to come and re release the people of Israel from the power of Rome. They kind of viewed Caesar as Pharaoh. And so they were looking for a new prophet like Moses to come. If they had received Jesus, who knows what might have happened. We don't know. But I believe in God's perfect plan, they rejected him so that the suffering servant prophecies could also be fulfilled. They were looking, they, the Pharisees, they always looked at it as two different people. They couldn't reconcile. How could you have one king-like person who is going to lead the people out of their bondage and have another person who is suffering and even dying? They couldn't put the two together. And so, it was a problem. But Jesus says... Their words themselves are going to condemn them. Remember verse 19, it says, It shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. But you do not have his word abiding in you, because whom he sent, him you do not believe. So here Jesus takes that fillet knife and he cuts it right into behind the gill and he just chops them up. He's saying, You don't believe. And you are fried because of it. You are, in fact, going to be required of, uh, before God to answer because of your rejection of Jesus Christ. Now, we who are in Christ, we have nothing to worry about because we have, in fact, received him. There are people in this world, in our community, in our families, perhaps in this church, who have not yet humble themselves before Jesus Christ and repent of their sins. The call to repent still stands. We are all invited to turn around and give our lives over to Jesus Christ. While we still have breath within us, there is hope. While the clock is still ticking and Jesus has not yet returned to this earth, there is still hope. There's time. And so I encourage you 
not only to think about your own salvation, but think about those people you love that may not yet know Jesus. See if God can raise you up to be a John the Baptist in their lives so that they can hear the good news and also humble themselves and be saved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you stand as a witness to Jesus Christ. I thank you that you have given you you have given the word, the scriptures that we can search because in them we do believe that we find eternal life. And those scriptures do speak about Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would give us your Holy Spirit in full measure so that we are truly able to discern what your word is saying to us today. And help us to be the shining and burning lamps so that others can rejoice in our life for a little while. We pray in Jesus' name.